I'm Dr. Scott Shakora. I'm the Director of Metabolic Health and Bariatric Surgery at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And today we're going to do a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. The sleeve gastrectomy is a relatively newer operation to combat intractable morbid obesity and related uh, disorders. Uh, it seems to be very attractive to patients and that it has a lot of the benefits we see with the gastric bypass but it seems to be safer and maybe a little more physiologic because we're not handling intestines or doing bypasses. We will free up and then remove the outer crescent of the stomach, leaving behind a stomach that'll be shaped like a tube and hold approximately three to five ounces of food. Uh, the weight loss is generally secondary to the fact that they eat less because the sleeve is smaller than a native stomach, but there are probably also hormonal changes that occur. The part of the stomach we remove produces one of the main appetite hormones called ghrelin, so we dramatically reduce appetite with this. The operation will uh, likely result in that she'll lose 50 to 65 percent of her excess body weight. It's a very good chance she'll be off all medications with normal blood pressure, with less pain in the joints and back. And if she continues to do well after this, it's very likely she'll live longer, healthier, and a happier life. The first step of the operation is to locate the valve at the end of the stomach called the pylorus, because we're going to do our measurements from it. And it should be right over there where those little blood vessels are. The blue thing up a little bit higher is her gallbladder. Now we're going to start mobilizing the stomach now that we marked where we're going to begin the cutting when we're ready to cut. What we're doing is we're mobilizing the outer edge of the stomach called the greater curvature and taking down all the little blood vessels that attach to the stomach on the greater curvature so that the stomach will be completely freed up and then we could do the sleeve. The stomach has a very rich blood supply Many vessels feed it, so we can take all these small blood vessels and it's of no consequence to the healing of the stomach. And what you see at approximately 1 p.m. on the screen, that's the spleen. And when we get higher up, we're going to be very close to the spleen, working between the spleen and the stomach. So we're just uh, finishing up taking the vessels. Where we are now is a bit more difficult than before, just there are more vessels and the space is a little tighter. That thing you see beating, that's curlicule, that's the splenic artery, and we certainly don't want to injure it doing this. We're looking at the uh, crura, which is the muscle by the diaphragm where the es esophagus comes out of the chest into the belly and where the stomach starts. And that's our landmark for how far we go. Now we're going to put a thick tube called a bougie into the stomach. So then when we do our sleeve, we won't make it too narrow or too large. It's not very easy to look at a stomach like this and know exactly where to do the cutting to make the sleeve the right size. So by putting a big tube into the stomach, we can use that as a guide. All right, can we, we're going to start the cutting now when we use what's called a stapling device, which is a surgical device that cuts and closes with very tiny titanium staples both sides of what it cuts so that there's no leakage while we're operating. Great. And those are the little titanium staples that you could see, little shiny silver things. And we're looking to make sure that their rows look appropriate, that it, it didn't break, where the staples don't appear loose or are poorly formed. That all looks terrific. Now we're going to continue to head up till we get to the esophagus. You'll notice the white seam. And that's exactly what it is. It's called a buttressing material called peristrips that is thought to make the staple lines or the cuts stronger and less likely to, to bleed.
And when you get up to the highest one, you actually come a little bit more lateral. You leave a little bit of a dog ear. And the reason for that is that the esophagus is missing one of the layers of the GI tract called the serosa. And if you staple onto the esophagus, because it's missing a layer, it may not heal as well. So we always give a little dog ear up there so that we're actually never on the esophagus or very close to it. We're staying on the stomach. And that looks perfect because your esophagus is over a distance medial from where you are. Actually, can you get in the crotch of your old staple line? That's better. All right. I like it. Do you? Yep. Now there's your last cut. You want to be more medial if you can. There's our little dog ear. All right, you just need to cut the strip with the scissor now. All right, so let's look. We are basically done. The three major complications of the operation would be leakage if any of this new, what we call staple line or seam is uh, not complete or doesn't heal. So the inside fluids would get out into the abdomen and cause an infection. Another would be that we made the sleeve too narrow and we end up with what's called a stricture. And the tube that we had in helps us minimize that risk. The other is this twisting like this. And this is the spot it would twist. And some surgeons will just take a stitch from here to some of the fat underneath just to sort of hold it down. You see the difference in bleeding from the first cut that we didn't use the strip, the peri strips, to the peri strips? Now let's just make sure that that's okay. I don't see anything actively bleeding. And if that's okay, then we're done. Now we have to get rid of the specimen. This port grab the narrow end which you're holding. Can I have a Kelly? And you're going to pull it to the port. It won't go through the port, but when you get to the point where it's at the port, pull the port out. Okay. Just pull everything out. Great. All right, we have the port. Now we're just closing the port site because we're, it's good size and with pulling the specimen out through that port. Can I have a, a hunter? It'd be a risk of a hernia. So that's the sleeve gastrectomy. It went uh, without any problems and hopefully this patient will do very well. Thank you very much for watching us today. We appreciate it. If you have any questions about the procedure or the Center for Metabolic Health and Weight Loss Surgery, uh, please visit the Brigham website. Thank you.